Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. Man, it's been a hot minute since I did a video. I think I did a couple last week, so we're going to continue on this process of learning and warming up on the channel. Drawing traditionally, drawing some portraits. I've really been exploring some of the methodologies that I utilize uh, whenever I draw portraits. And, um, you know, I wanted to share some of those things with you uh, guys this morning. So let's get started. Working on Bristol board this morning. You guys I know that I love my Bristol board because it's so thick and it's so chunky. I like them thick and chunky. <sighs> the reality is Bristol board's really durable. It's cheap and I'm cheap. So there you go. Now you know the secret behind why I use Bristol board so much. Okay. Portraits. I love old photographs. I love old photographs. First of all, a lot of them are, you know, outside of the confines of copyright um, so I can show them on here without any rep repercussion a lot of these are really old we're talking yeah like late 1800s old and I love just the way you know the old-time photography really captures the rawness of what's going on in the moment some of these are actually newer this one looks newer I could tell just from the clarity of it this one's really old. This was part of a, a secondary uh, or, a, or a primary photograph. This is a secondary cropping. Um, just look, uh, you know, he's a husband uh, sitting next to his grizzled uh, wife, but, you know, still a gentleman in his Sunday best, or at least what he configured to be his Sunday best. And I love different cultures. I love just the way things look and how people look. Man, ah, you can, if you just stroll through and scroll through, stroll and scroll at the same time, the um, the archives that are there uh, on Pinterest and, and on the internet, you can really find some gems. And of course, things like this, I don't support smoking, but I love, you know, if we remove this, I love just the simplicity and the clean skin of the lines and how the hair comes around. Uh, you know, and with this derby hat, um, oh, I just love it and how clean this is. Uh, you know, remove the cigarette, obviously, but I love just, I saw this and it really struck me as being something that I'd love to do. So let's go back to this. This looks fairly simple. It looks, you know, square head. Moving into the three-quarter view. I like three-quarter view because, you know, it, it, it definitely, you can definitely get a lot of the face in, um, you know, frontal views, you know, like this one down here, even though it is a frontal, it's like a semi three-quarter frontal. It's not a full-on frontal um, view. And this is probably my favorite view, but whenever it comes to doing portraits and stuff like that, I do like doing this. So let's go ahead and start doing this and see how much we can mess it up. <laughs> okay, hopefully you guys are having an awesome week. Uh, my week is super busy. I've just been so inundated with stuff. Um, it's been redonkulous. Okay, so starting out with a circle, you've seen this a million times. First we start out with a circle, and there's a circle, and you know, then you draw the shapes, and there's shapes, and there's lots of other things going on. Then we have this line of action coming down. What I'm trying to do is basically demystify the process to which we draw. You know, drawing is translation. It's translation from what you see to what you have in your brain and then there gets you know blah, 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 all up in your brain and then you transfer it down your hand into the pencil and you're commanding your hand to basically convey the translation um so best the best thing to do is not confuse your brain and and in doing that what i like to do is just to draw really simple just i mean i look at something and i look at the silhouette so looking at this you might see Oh my gosh, there's so many different eyebrows. Look at those. Man, those are some incredible eyebrows. If I had 5% of those eyebrows, I would be like, I'd be legit, like a legit baller. I could go out and, and yeah, anyway, I, I'm very thin on the eyebrow action. Um, but what I see is this silhouette, this very large, you know, coming off the background. 
and I'm seeing this beard as a shape and you've got, you know, believe it or not, you've got this other, you know, his, his uh, turtleneck coming around <clears throat> and you can see the weathering and all of that tends to overwhelm us as, as observers. So what I like to do is I just like to go down and I break down everything into these really basic elements uh, on the page that help me kind of create a roadmap. You know, I've talked about that roadmap before and I'm not, and again, I'm not, you see, I'm holding my pencil. I'm, I'm using my entire arm and this is uh, just a methodology that I utilize. It's not something that is written in stone. And if you don't do it my way, it's the highway. No, that's, that's not it at all. This, these are the things that I've obtained in my tour belt through the years to really, how do I say, um, discern what works for me? You know, what works for me doesn't necessarily work for you. That's why it's important as illustrators, artists, graphic designers, people who are in the visual uh, arts to really look at the way other people do things because man, you can take, pick and choose. You can, it's like a la carte. You can go and pick it. I like the way you do faces. I like the way you do arms. I like the way the methodology you utilize doing hands and bodies. And I like your color theory. And what ends up happening is you get exposed to all of this. <clears throat> you don't go and expose yourself. You go and get exposed to all of this. I'm trying to keep it light. Um, then suddenly you'll have a style. You know, I, I, I can recall being in school and there was this rush. It was like, I need to find my style. I need to find my style. I need to find my style. And, you know, I think that's all well and good. But the style is, my style is constantly changing. I'm constantly revising the way I do things and, and uh, finding better ways to do things and, you know, worse ways to do things and then I'll eliminate those things and and basically what it is is you're evolving you're learning you're changing and and that's what I think is really uh, great about what I do in, in my job you know I'm constantly adding you know somebody will ask me to do you know Scooby-Doo I'll add Scooby-Doo to my tool belt or the Powerpuff Girls or something Harry Potter or something Marvel and all these style cues are going to be different than, than what my normal quote unquote drawing style is, but I love adding those <clears throat> to again, the way that I do things. So you see that I'm starting to put in these shapes, you know, I'm not, you know, this beard is nice and full. So I'm not going to think of the beard as individual hairs. I'm going to think, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to think rhythm and flow. So rhythm and flow, uh, in the context of the beard, you see how the hairs grow out. You know, hopefully I don't have too bad of a reflection. They grow out and they have direction, but I'm not going to go in and draw the individual hairs. I'm going to think in terms of direction and how these hairs are placed on the face and how they conform to that cheek, how they, how they grow, how they move, you know, in the wind and so on and so forth. And, you know, again, having a little bit of fun trying to anyway, while I teach you guys my methodology for doing portraits. Okay. So now I, again, I've, I've thought, okay, so I'm starting to put in the eyebrows. You've got this hat that comes around. And then again, let's go ahead and draw the big shape that comes around. And I'm thinking also, I'm thinking, uh, anatomy. So anatomy of the skull and the three core view where certain bones are placed, how far up, you know, how far up that head's going to go. So even if I go so far as to marking it, and then I have the hat on top of that, how this comes around and drawing you know doing doing the simple shapes really will help alleviate some of that angst that I have believe it or not I still have angst when I start drawing I'm still like okay this is gonna be the best drawing I've ever done you ever done that this is going to be the best drawing I've ever done and what happens when you do that is you start how do I put it you start not wanting to cross that threshold of exploration you, you kind of inhibit your creativity by saying this is going to be. Now, there's no, there's no um, foul in saying that you're going to attempt, but the best thing that you can do for yourself is say, I'm going to sit down and draw today and I'm just going to have some fun. You know, who cares if I mess it up? Who cares? Who cares? Nobody's going to see this garbage anyway. Um, and, you know, eventually, you know, 
I'll get to a place where this will be one of the drawings, one of the 10,000, you know, I don't know what they say, 20,000, 50,000 drawings, 90,000 drawings, before you get to be in that, in that area of uh, quote unquote uh, understanding of the process and being a master. I do not consider myself to be a master at all. I am like so far from that, um, especially in later in my career, it's funny that maturity comes and you suddenly think to yourself, man, I don't know jack nothing. I don't know crap, you know? And it, it is funny when you get to that point uh, and then you start realizing, man, all that stuff that I thought I knew and I, I was like the, the shiznit in college, um, you don't really know anything. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just putting in again those simple shape elements. I can't push too hard on this because this will break. So I'm being very ginger. I'm, I'm ginger, gingerly doing things. Got that pipe that comes right here. I'm gonna be careful of where I put that item. And two, if I just barely put it in, I don't have to really worry. See, even just like it's just that cylinder right there. We'll go back to the reference materials, that little cylinder with this, just that, just like two lines. Boom, boom, done. I, I'm not going back to it until I have to. And, and I continue on, you know, putting the things in that I want to put in. Got that hair that comes around. Okay, got the collar that comes down. Okay, so the end part of the eye, that eyebrow really comes down. Like I said, if I had 5% of this guy's eyebrows, I'd be in a different spot in my life, I'm sure. If you see, I've got, I've got little itty bitty wispy eyebrows. It didn't used to be that way. You know, I think later on in life, I just, they went away. The, 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 the eyebrow fairy quit visiting me to replace the eyebrows, right? Okay, so what I'm doing now is I literally just put in that placeholder for the eye. I've got the corner of the eye right here, which I can't see in the reference, so that's not a big deal. So I'll just, I'll just shade over it. We'll just cover that up. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is I'm starting to put things in relationships. So that relationship placement, you know, got that corner of his head that I can't see that's going to come around. And it's going to go into the hat. And it's okay if you want to draw in to the hat that you threw. That's okay if you want to do that. That really helps me. So we'll come back and his ear is all the way over here. So I need to get that eye in place before I draw that ear. So let's go ahead and go in. And you see I'll put these little indicators, these little indicator lines. The corner of the eye right here matches up with the inner part of the eye. That is just one of those little... Uh, items that I know as, you know, drawing a lot of portraits and over time, that that's where the corner of the eye is going to be. You know, the, the corner of the nose, or the edge of the nose is, is in line with the corner of the eye, and the mouth, whenever you're smiling, is in line with the pupil, <clears throat> typically. If you're doing stylized stuff, that might change, so let's go ahead and put that here. And that top lid is pretty thick. And then we've got this brow, this eyebrow that comes around here. Okay. Man, these eyebrows are epic, dude. Like I said, five per, okay, let's go down to 3%. 3% of your brows, mister, and I'll, I'll be your best friend. That, that, that'd that be good to go. Okay, so he's got kind of a Santa Claus feel, but there is some weathering there. Let's go ahead and have this mustache go over. I'm gonna go ahead and just start putting in some of the definitive details of that beard. So again, I can get relationship of where stuff is supposed to be. Let's get his baggage. And his eyes are kind of squinty. So this comes up, over, and then it abruptly cups in. And you've got this nose bridge that comes up, around, and then we'll have this here. And you've got this baggage right here. 
and he is kind of squinting so I want to make sure he's moved this upper or this bottom lid over how that comes around and you see just a hint since the light is going to be brighter that pupil is going to be really small and you've got this iris right there let's go ahead and put that in now in the reference I can't see any of this I can't see any of the placement but I know it's there so I'm gonna go ahead and just shade that in slightly go ahead, up, 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 up and then you've got this hat that comes around <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. Good. All right. So now, again, let's go back to this. A little bit of shading, and then it comes over that pipe. Don't smoke. I'm going to stylize the pipe just slightly. And again, it doesn't look like in the reference that he's lit the pipe, but we're going to have just a little bit of some material on the inside that you can see. And a little bit of smoke coming out of it. Okay, so now let's go back. Let's again define some of these areas, shade stuff in. You know, not being too heavy handed, not having that heavy line. And again, let's look. The reference, you can see there's a really dark shadow right here, and then it goes to the inside of the eye, and all of these wrinkles that are there. <clears throat> so, what I can do is I can just literally shade this in, come back, and we're going to have some wrinkles come out. You know, we talked about whenever you bend your finger and you have that squashing. The same thing happens. You squash this eye and it pushes out this cheek. It pushes out some of the other areas. You lift up your mouth and you've got this crease right here. He's got a huge nostril. I say, sir, that nostril is gigantic and you can drive a Chrysler right through it. You'll notice, you know, certain body types, certain culture types, you know, uh, certain, uh, again, certain ages, you know, whenever you get older, what happens is your skin loses elasticity and gravity starts pulling everything down and you're starting to see that, you know, in, in these areas right here, this fat's being pulled down, everything's being pulled down and he's been weathered from the sea. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and fill this beard out a little bit you notice I'm not going in and really getting deep into the whiskers <laughs> whiskers and that's because a lot of times less is more you know you draw especially in the context of what I'm trying to teach you guys today I can go in obviously and really get in there and shade and do everything that's needed for uh, the beard and you know that would take time and you would be like all right I'm bored so what I'm trying to just basically do is give you the understanding of the basics of placement of stuff of where it is you know where stuff is going and hopefully and hopefully you guys will understand that little pause because I wanted to make sure these curls right here curl a little bit over his hat you got this little indication here a little like a rope coming around this looks like a captain hat but I'm not sure it is it just looks like a, a seaman you know, somebody that is a uh, uh, ocean person, an ocean person. <laughs> it's an ocean person. I don't even know what to say. Fisherman. There we go. Okay, so we place that in. We've got that. Let's go ahead and shade that in a little bit. Bottom lip. So I see a little bit of an indication of his, of his, you know, where the top lip meets the bottom lip, and then now I'm gonna. A little bit of a bottom and then it comes around like that and then we've got these whiskers to quote some of my friends here up in the mountains every W has to have an H in it 
Whiskers, Holy Obara, Whar, Who. Believe it or not, that is the way the you know the Appalachian uh, people. That is a uh, a dialogue <laughs> indicator. Yeah. Had to get used to it. I'm like, um, why are you putting an H in the W? Because that's why I do it. I do it because I'm who I am. Don't you question me, Florida boy. All right. Put a little bit of shading and shadowing in. Now it's just what I refer to as dressing. So let's go ahead and put his ear in because he's got to be able to hear. He's got to be able to hear things. And this is somewhat stylized, even though I do have a realistic reference. I'm still, you know, I'm not drawing everything exactly <laughs> the way I see it. I just do, and we've got that cheek that comes out a little bit, and you're going to whiskers come out a little bit more. Okay, and this is really dark over here. So now what I like to do is I squint. So if I were to squint, I see the shapes in or I see the shadows in terms of shapes. So let's go ahead and we'll shade these in. I got this big shape that comes around here. That's a shadow shape. Shadow shape. Squint. And we've got this shadow shape that comes here. Comes around. Right there. And all this is in shadow. Even his eye. You can barely see some of the details in there. And he's got this, because of his hat, this highlight that's on his nose right here, and it curves around. And all this, all this is in shadow. Doing this really quickly, because I don't want this video to be like a billion mile, or a billion years long. But I, I don't want to go too fast, because I want to show you the, the, the process. Okay, so then we have a shadow down here. And we'll shadow right here. Comes brown and all this on the other side is reflected light. Okay, and a nice dark right here. Even though he's got a white mustache, you're gonna wanna shade some of those areas in with value to push and pull that form, you know, push it back, pull it. I mean, literally I could go in and I could work on eyeballs, I could, you know, like this right here coming around. That's all in shadow. Shadow. White shadow. Not white shadow. Shadows are dark. Yeah. I'm going to come around here. And this goes like this. Yeah. All right. And then it comes here. Okay. Shade that in. La 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 just like a Prismacolor ebony pencil, whenever you put the value down, it's really dark. The harder you push, you know, that it doesn't really have a, 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 a hard feel to it. So whenever you put it on its side, you can get a lot of material down. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay. darker on this side and this would probably be a, just a study for possibly you know me doing a painting I would do I would go in and you know he's got these hair he's got a nice hair that's a 
that's nice. You know, doing the study and, and working out where I'm going to put those value shapes in, you know, even going so far <clears throat> as to, um, you know, whenever I you know, possibly doing a color study. I don't know. Put some of those darker values. And i got to be careful because I'm, I'm kind of choked back on the pencil there. I don't want to break it. Okay. So as you see, you know, even though I did make some mistakes, I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you guys, I'm having fun, you know, and that's really what it's all about, guys. That's, gosh, drawing doesn't have to be stress. You know, I talk about how I utilize drawing as a stress relief and, and the amount of work that I've been doing lately in my professional life is is really putting me in a spot where I need to do this a lot more because you know you never want to stop drawing you never want to get into a spot where drawing or creating becomes drudgery and that's why you have to step away and do your own thing you know if you're not a professional and you don't draw every day and you 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 have a lot of other obligations you know family and job and work and you're utilizing uh, art as a therapeutical that's not even a word a therapeutic uh, resource, then yes, um, have as much freedom and fun as you can. <laughs> I encourage you guys to do that. You know, drawing and art is really uh, for everybody. I think it should be for everybody. You know, not just all you wonderful concept artists that draw stuff that looks exactly the same as everybody else's. Uh, I just, I just. A lot of the concept art in today's world looks exactly the same. I mean, you go through and it's got that painterly photo bash feel. And I understand why they do that. I get it. You know, it's faster. It's, But there is a lot of value to it. You know, it, it a lot of those guys are really good and really fast. And in and, and the professional world, you have to be that to be a success. You know, I encourage... There's a guy that I've I, I bought, I've purchased, I've bought... I've purchased quite a few of his uh, tutorials as well as his brushes, and he's a concept artist. His name's Trent Kanuga. I believe that's the way you pronounce his last name. Sorry, Trent, if I completely mess your name up. Um, I'm sure he doesn't even know who I am. But he's a great concept artist and a great teacher, and he teaches you really great things, and he gives away free stuff, and he's got a heart for teaching, and he's been in the industry forever. You know, we're talking ship AAA games, so look him up. He's got a YouTube channel. Uh, go give him some love some support um, and definitely uh, you know if you guys are interested in doing portraits and learning the portraits and learning the process and you know we're gonna get into caricatures too caricatures I love doing caricatures um, because you know I, I, I'm a cartoonist and, and satirist at heart so I love to make fun uh, you guys probably know that about me I'm not a I'm, I don't do it to, to insult, I do it to uh, pay homage to. Um, so, you know, caricatures to me are just, you know, having fun. <laughs> That's really basically what I want to do. Oh, I forgot the hair over here. I'm looking over here and I'm like, what am I missing? There's hair. So a little bit of value here. So as you see, <clears throat> it's got the essence of this but it's not quite exact and you know for today's lesson I think that's gonna do you know what we'll do is uh, the next time you and I come together I will still have him here and then I might do the girl I think she's just oh man she's she's the the way they the picture is beautiful um, other than the cigarette in her mouth that kind of makes yeah you know or I might do this guy right here I think he's really fun. Yeah, I might do him. Yeah, we'll do him <clears throat> next. So, okay, so now what I'm doing is going back and putting some shadows in, putting some, making sure I realize where stuff is is important, you know. So, all right, guys. Stay tuned. I'll be doing the other video, drawing that other guy um, here in the next couple days, as long as my brain doesn't explode from all the work I have to do. <laughs> Art therapy. <sighs> Alright guys. I feel like I need to go over on this side. 
What is going on on this side? Yeah, I need to. So here, 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 here. Squint the eyes, and all this is in shadow. Shadow. Yeah, and then we'll have this come around. And comes around like that. Yeah, I think that's where we're gonna land, guys. Please hit that notification bell, like and subscribe. Please, please, please for the love of all that is holy. I'm just kidding. Um, I do this not for the cash. Obviously, I don't really make any money. Maybe seventy-five to a hundred dollars a month, if that. And you know, all those guys make making millions of dollars on YouTube. That's not me. Um, yes, <laughs> tongue in cheek, pinky in the mouth. Um, but the reality is, like I said before, just like and subscribe, and if you hit that notification bell every time I make a video and I post it, you'll get notified. And if you like it, it'll go into the algorithm as, ooh, ooh, they like this video. So then it'll start pulling some of the other videos that I have. I've got like almost 600 videos on my channel. <laughs> it's hard to believe. And that'll really help uh, everything out um, going forward. Anyway, thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Should we relax?